Hello and welcome to the fourth video in Tell All About Watercolor or Watercolor Tell All, whatever I called it. Anyway, this is going to be the first video that's not going to be about selections per se. This will be the first one that is a tip about how to use watercolor. And I've made the image, uh, I've, I've zoomed in on the image, but we're not going to use that right at the moment. So I'm going to turn off the, um, well, found the right place to turn it off. Oh my goodness, it's on the locked layer. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember now. I did do that. <laughs> okay, so now that's turned off. And what I'm going to do at this moment is grab my rectangular selection tool. I'm going to have it on plus, and I'm going to make a couple of rectangles, uh, maybe three, like about this. And we'll put one in the middle right here, and we're kind of close to them, so that's good. And I'll go ahead and save the selection just so that I don't have to do that again. So we'll call this three uh, triangles. No, <laughs> rectangles. <laughs> All right, I'll get it right in a minute. Okay, and then we'll say, okay. All right, now, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about watercolor and how they react with selections. So if you take a really wet watercolor and you paint it in a selection, the paint is only going to happen inside the selection. It won't paint out here, but it will paint inside the selection. However, when it bleeds, it will bleed outside of the selection. Okay, so I just painted it, stayed in there, and look, see when it finishes it uh so when it finishes it r runs outside of the lines here and that's not very good now this was a real runny it was also a watercolor brush instead of a real watercolor brush incidentally i may talk some about digital watercolor but not a lot because i don't use it a lot but there are a couple of techniques that i do use that i like now, if we go to something like Skip's Grainy Bristle, this top brush up here, and see it paints inside, and I can paint light or heavy, and then when it bleeds, it still comes out like that. It, it doesn't stay inside. Now, if it's real dry brush and doesn't run very much, it will stay pretty much inside. Um, but most of the brushes that I work with are going to be somewhat wet. And so they're going to run outside of the brush per se. But now, as you look at this one, you'll see that it really doesn't go outside very much, right? Okay, well, let's see what happens if I change the paper. All right, so if I look at the paper we're in, it's at a, it's just the Saunders Waterford North that I've been using all along. The scale is 100%, contrast is 100%, and brightness is 50%. Let's go to the basic paper. Now, when I go to the basic paper, if I take it and I drop the scale way down and I bring the contrast way up and I drop the brightness down, that may be too much, but we'll see. Okay, so that's where we are now. And I sit here and over on this side, I paint again the same brush and I let it run. Look, ta-da! It hardly even went outside the line. I don't know why it's lighter, though. That's weird. It's probably because it's not being able to soak into the paper very much. But but in any event, you, you see that it is not um, going outside the lines. And that's the important part of this video. 
One of the most useful things you can do if you want to keep your uh, lines, um, keep your, your paint within the line, so to speak, and not bleed out, you might use one of these papers that you can really tighten down uh, on the uh, really tighten down on the the uh, scale and the contrast so that it it's harder for the paint to run. Now, I've picked another paper, and that one has a sort of a texture to it. This brush shows texture, by the way. But, and it doesn't allow the brush, well, let me make sure it's on, no. See, I've got the contrast up to 400, which is holding it in place. Let me reset that. Now, when I reset that to the standard, I'm not going to get as much texture. And there you go. It begins to run out. But in this case, if I just take the contrast and run it up to 400, that's all I need to do to get this to stay inside the lines. Now, it bleeds out in spots that's because that paper is not a um it doesn't have an even texture on it like the the basic paper would have and so it'll have little spots where it can bleed out because that's not a tight spot now let's see let's look at um let's look at another one of these here let's go to a uh, grainy runny flat now, this one is another runny, runny brush. It's also set up for color expression. We'll talk about that later. All right. Now, that's it at the big, uh, you know, at, at the contrast being at 400%. And again, see, it didn't, it didn't really go outside the lines very much. If we take that same paper, oops, and uh, reset it and do the same thing, Ta da See, it comes out uh, more. Now, these are fairly dry brushes. In other words, if I were to put them on the side here, they're not going to move that much. But just that much can be, uh, can be a problem, you know. But paper is very important with watercolor, even if the watercolor is not showing the texture of the paper. It's important because it can hold the watercolor. It can change the way it looks. It does all sorts of things. So it's important that we learn how to use watercolor with paper. Okay, I will come back in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.